Welcome to this report engineering. In this session, we will be completing the general aspects of the air transportation. We have already completed half of the chapter in the previous session, and now we will be completing the remaining portion. So let's begin. The first topic which we are going to learn today are the component parts of the aircraft. So which are the basic components of the aircraft? What are their functions? Engine, propeller, fuselage, wings, three controls, and flaps. We will be seeing uh, what these uh, components are, where these components are placed, and what are their specific uh, functions. Engine is basically to move the aircraft. Propeller again, that is uh, which propels, which moves the aircraft ahead. The power is derived from the engine. Fuselage is the body of the aircraft. Wings are for the lift, which we will be seeing. Three controls are basically uh, for the control of the aircraft in the three directions that is, the vertical direction, horizontal direction, and the sideways movement. So, we will be seeing which components are used for these three controls, and again, flaps also, which we will be seeing. So, now uh, this is a picture representing all the components. Of the aircraft along with their functions. So we will be seeing uh, one by one the various components. Cockpit uh, basically where the pilot is placed, where the command and control of the aircraft takes place. So, uh, point from where the whole functioning of the aircraft is sort of maintained. So cockpit we already know. Fuselage as I told basically is the body of the aircraft. It holds the things Together carries the payload. Payload we have already studied. That is the load which will be generating the revenue. That is the passengers, the baggages, cargo, meals. So basically, all these commodities are placed in the fuselage. Fuselage is sort of a connection which holds all the various components, binds them together. Next is uh, slates, which is this portion. That is the front. Uh, portion of the wings and its purpose is basically increasing the lift at the time of the you can say takeoff operation whenever the aircraft is going to take off whenever it needs the lift at that time it will increase the lift through the slates. Next are the spoilers which have been uh, mentioned here. Now a uh, spoiler basically as the word itself suggests comes into picture when the excessive uh, thrust to be reduced. So, if there is excessive thrust or energy uh, existing which is not needed in the aircraft, then that is dissipated through the uh, spoilers. And also, it can change uh, the alignment in all the three directions that is, the vertically, horizontally, or the sideways as well. Next is aileron, which is along the backward edge of the wings. Now, aileron is for changing the role. Role means the Front and left movement of the aircraft is along the longitudinal axis. So, the function of aileron is changing the uh, horizontal longitudinal movement, uh, the front and movement of the aircraft is done through the aileron. Next are the flaps, which are for increasing the lift and the drag. So, uh, lift is needed whenever we need to carry out the takeoff operation. So, the lift is needed with the wings. So, flaps uh, increase. Uh, that lift. Basically, uh, flap comes into picture whenever we have uh, slow speed or the speed of the aircraft is moderate and uh, the flaps even at that moderate or slow speed can generate a uh, high amount of lift. So, thus they can uh, generate lift and increase lift and drag that is sort of uh, moving along. So, generating uh, that uh, moving along uh, force for the aircraft along with the wind. Now next are the yaw, pitch and roll. Roll as I told is the front leg movement. Yaw is the movement in the vertical plane while uh, pitch is the sideway movement. So there are basically three uh, controls that is yaw that is along the vertical plane that is the elevation. Roll that is the horizontal or the, along the length longitudinal that is front back. Each is the 
along the sideways that is left or right. So elevator and the horizontal stabilizer are related to the pitch that is the left right movement of the aircraft sideways movement. So elevator changes the pitch and horizontal stabilizer controls that alignment along that uh, plane. Next, yaw that is along the vertical plane are the rudder and the vertical stabilizer. So rudder changes the yaw that is the vertical alignment elevation the vertical stabilizer controls uh, this uh, movement in the vertical plane. Next is the winglet which decreases the drag. Now drag is sort of as we have seen that the continuous flow of flow along with the wind. So whenever the drag is excessive, same as uh, we talk about the spoiler, it is when thrust or energy is excessive, or the drag is excessive, which is existing but it is not needed uh, to the aircraft. So the winglet will reduce this excessive drag or force which is lifting on the aircraft. Wings which are for generating the lift uh, basically which will be needed by uh, beginning the operation. Turbine engine is generating the thrust that is generating the force within the wind. Uh, we can say action reaction that is uh, the thrust will be applied and in the opposite direction the movement of the aircraft will take place. So these are the various components of the aircraft their functions in green. Next topic is the aircraft uh, characteristics. So these are the list of the various characteristics which should be unknown or which should be studied because ultimately whenever we are designing an airport, all these various uh, characteristics of the aircraft will be having an effect on the design. So we need to have the knowledge of these various characteristics of the aircraft. So we will be seeing one by one all these characteristics. First is the size of the aircraft, the weight of the aircraft, what is the capacity of the aircraft, speed of the aircraft, minimum circling radius, the airspace, jet blast which we have studied, fuel spillage, noise, and what is the tire pressure in the bobcat area. Also in this image all the three controls uh, have been shown, yo that is along the vertical axis, elevation, then roll that is along the longitudinal axis, front and back, and pitch that is sideways, that is in left or right, is the lateral axis that is perpendicular to the longitudinal axis. So, first of all, let us begin with the size of the aircraft, which are the dimensions. So, which are defined by first of all the wingspan. So, what is the extent of the wingspan? What parameters or which design aspects? Span effect. It will affect the taxi wing and the apron because ultimately apron will be housing the aircraft itself. So, what is the extent of the wing span will have its say in deciding the area of the apron. Also, taxi way because the turning operation, the maneuvering operation is to be carried out on the taxi way. So, that will have an effect uh, in that as well. Length, uh, which parameters will the length of the aircraft? So, first of all, the exit, taxi way. What is the width which we have to provide uh, for the connection between the runway and the exit, taxi way? The size of the apron, so depending upon the length, the size of the apron has to be provided. Also, the hangar where the service maintenance work is done. So, we have also studied the types of hangar. So, if the hangar is provided, which will be accommodating the full aircraft, so depending upon the length, the extent of the hangar has to be. Side. And last is the height. So, if we talk about the height aspect of the aircraft, what would it affect? It would affect the height of the hangar because ultimately the hangar will be housing the aircraft. So, what should be the clear height of the hangar will depend upon uh, what is the height of the aircraft which is going to uh, visit that hangar. So, uh, these uh, aspects we need to be aware about uh, while designing that is the height. What is the height? Length of the aircraft, what is the wingspan, which will be ultimately having an effect in the design portion. Again, this is just a view uh, regarding the various dimensions. The wingspan, that is the extent of the span. Gear trail, that is the distance between the two wheels of the main gear, which we have seen in the taxi design. This is the front view. We talk about the top view, the tail width. Then the length of the aircraft has been shown. What is the height of 
of the aircraft has been shown. Wheelbase, wheelbase is the distance between the nose gear and the main gear. So that also we have studied in the taxi way design. This is the side view. Next is the weight of the aircraft. Now we have various definitions related to the weight of the aircraft. So first is the zero fuel weight or the operating empty weight. So here as the word empty has been used. So it is excluding the passengers and the load of the fuel. So what it includes is the weight of the empty aircraft that is the self weight. It includes the fuel weight and the weight of the equipments which are placed in the aircraft. While it does not include the weight of the passenger and the fuel. So that is the zero fuel. The word has been used for the operating empty weight. That is the weight it does not uh, consider the load of the uh, operating components. Next is the payload. That is the load which will be generating the revenue. So revenue generating load consists of the passenger, meal and cargo. That is, uh, this is basically the load from which the uh, revenue can be generated. So that is the payload. Fuel weight, that is the weight of fuel taken by the aircraft for the trip along with the reserve. So what is the weight of the fuel for the journey, that is from origin to destination and also it includes the reserve fuel for the safety. Maximum gross takeoff weight, which is the maximum load which an aircraft is permitted for takeoff. So the uh, limit which uh, of the load which the aircraft can have at the time of taking. It includes the operating weight that is including the passengers and the fuels, payload that is the revenue generating uh, load of the mail and cargo along with the passengers, the load of the fuel for the journey and the reserve fuel as well. So that is inclusive of all the various components of the load. Maximum structural landing weight. So we have talked regarding the takeoff. Now if we talk about the landing weight, it is the maximum gross takeoff weight minus the so all this load will be included from that we have to subtract the load of the trip fuel because ultimately whenever it is going to land, it is whenever it is reaching the destination, the load of the fuel will be vanished. So that trip fuel has to be subtracted. Next is the aircraft capacity, it includes the passenger fuel and cargo. So basically how much amount of passenger or fuel or cargo can that aircraft accommodate or handle is the capacity. Bigger the capacity, larger the dimension, and more the weight. Next is the speed of the aircraft. So basically, there are two uh, bifurcations in the speed. It is the ground speed and the air speed. So, ground speed is the speed of an aircraft relating to the ground. That is in reference to the ground level. What is the speed of the aircraft? And air speed is relative to the air medium. That is, say for example, if wind is acting in the opposite direction of the movement, then that will have an effect on the speed. If the wind is acting along the direction of the movement, then that will also have its effect. So depending upon what is the direction of the wind, the speed of the aircraft in the air medium will be changed. So that is the air speed, while the effect of wind will not be existent in the ground speed. Next is the minimum circling radius. It is the certain minimum radius in space required for an aircraft to take turn in the space. So, say for example, if an aircraft is about to land, but at that time another aircraft is using the runway, then the landing operation cannot be carried out. So, at that time the aircraft might move in the airspace. So, what is the minimum radius in the space which the aircraft will require to take the turn? It is termed as the circling radius. Depends upon the type of aircraft, depends upon the dimension of the aircraft, uh, that will have an effect. Depends upon the aircraft traffic, existing aircraft traffic and the weather condition at that instant. Used to decide the clearance distance between two airports. So if there are two nearby airports, depending upon this minimum circling radius, the clearance has to be kept because uh, the space should be available for the circling operation to be carried out by the aircraft along the airspace of that airport. So the uh, circling radius one aircraft of a specific airport should not be interfering with the circling radius of the airport in the vicinity. Next is the jet blast, which we have already studied. The 
aircraft so what class high temperature which might be the fighter of the movement so the hot exhaust gas which are uh, removed from the aircraft might sort of you know, uh, deteriorating effect on the movement jet blast also cause the inconvenience to the passengers desirable to provide the blast fences for the protection we have already studied in detail this blast fence in the chapter of exhibit which are the implant structures of metal or CC provided so as to uh, sort of divert the hot exhaust gases in the air to make movement free of those exhaust gases. Next is the fuel spillage. So normally on focus at the loading apron of the hangars, uh, these are the specific terminal areas where the spillage uh, uh, occurs in more quantity. The bituminous pavement might get affected, so constant uh, supervision should be done so as to keep in check that there is no such spillage and if spillage occurs, then the remedial measures are taken as early as possible. Next are the noise and the tire and the contact pressure. So, noise is of importance in planning and in the site selection. We also need in detail in the airport planning that the residential area should not uh, feel nuisance airport in the vicinity but there should be a certain clearance between the airport site and the residential area it is advantageous to get airport away from the residential area. Tire pressure in the wheel loop will give indication of the width, time and strength of the movement needed for different type of aircraft. So what is the ultimate pressure which is being uh, exerted by the tire on the movement that is it will have on what should be the width of the pavement depending upon what pressure is to be rendered, the type of the pavement to be provided and ultimately the strength or the what should be the structural stability of the pavement to handle the aircraft efficiently. Lastly, we will be seeing a few definitions. First is the airway that is the air room along which the navigational aids are provided and maintained. We have seen various navigational aids. So the route along which they have been provided is termed as the airway. Domestic flight, that is the flight having destination within the country by an airline of that specific country. So the operating airline is of that country itself and also the origin and destination are in the same territory. Immigrants, which includes the permanent or temporary immigrants, which are uh, leaving a certain country, which are going towards uh, some other country certain duration or for permanent duration and also it includes the visitors who are uh, leaving the country for a uh, so short period of time. Next is the fuselage which we have uh, seen in previous session that is the main body of the aircraft. It consists of the pilot cockpit, the space for the passenger cargo and meal where they are accommodated. Next is the heliport that is an area for Landing and takeoff of the helicopters is also we have uh, seen in the previous session. STOL that is the short takeoff and landing. So, stall port is an area which is provided for landing and takeoff of STOL aircrafts. We have seen this in the previous session. So, basically, here the distance which is covered at the time of landing and takeoff operation is very small as compared to the conventional or normal landing and takeoff. Next is the subsonic aircraft, it is aircraft which travels at the speed less than that of sound and one which travels at the speed greater than the speed of sound that is the supersonic aircraft. Last is the surveillance radar which basically aids in navigation makes uh, the work of the pilot and the official easier so provides an overall picture of the surrounding atmosphere so we can get uh, the idea of the specific existing situation and as per that the pilot can carry out the operation. So that's it for this session uh, and the chapter of the general aspects of the air transportation.